Welcome in. It is time for Main Street today. Wherever you are, I hope that you'll click like and click share. If you're on our YouTube channel, for all those people who are not part of Facebook, welcome to our family. We're glad that you're here. We tell the stories of Middle Tennessee, just like our newspapers for Main Street Media. And right now we're on a bunch of the Facebook pages and we want to hear from you. So spot us a comment and uh, maybe your comment will make it on the show. Glad that you are here. And I bet I know who our first comment is from. Yes, I do. F watching in Lower Alabama. No, not Lower Alabama. You're actually Upper Alabama, Northern Alabama. Hello, Suzanne. Hello, Mark. Glad to have you here. Well, we're going to kick things off with someone who is going to be on Backstage Nashville. Third in Lindsley tomorrow, I'll be hosting. She was on American Idol and she really rocked the world because instead of taking one of their songs that they allowed, she used that moment with all those eyeballs to share her brand new single and original song called God Made a Woman. Here's Lauren Massetti on stage tomorrow, 1230 at 3rd and Lindsley. Tomorrow, you will be able to see Lauren Massetti at Main Streets uh, or at Backstage Nashville, backstagenashville.net to get your tickets. Every show sells out, starts at 1230. It is a matinee, which is right in my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. Come and have lunch mm -hmm. with us. And I want to introduce you to somebody. 
from Whiskey Ghost Entertainment Law. This is Colin Marr, and he's from Boston, and he mm -hmm. is now here, and he's doing something so cool. First of all, welcome. Thank you. Thank, thanks for having me. I, I, I'm happy to be here. Well, you know, when we start thinking about entertainment law, if you guys are part of the music industry, and who in Nashville isn't touched by the music industry, um, Colin has taken it and he's opened it up to contracts and record publishing agreements, licensing deals, trademarks, business formation, and copyrights. That's a big wheelhouse. Yes, it's a it's a lot, and and just like you said, you know, everything in the music industry kind of touches all of those different areas. So you know. Everyone has to think of themselves as a business when you're in the music mm -hmm. industry and and uh, when you get in the music industry, you, you know that all of those areas are going to be touched. So that's what I offer th those specific services for them. Right now we have, you know, my agent who is Mike Need over at Fusion Entertainment, mm -hmm. they have expanded what they're doing and like booking agents aren't just booking agents anymore because they're ha handling branding deals. Yeah. They're connecting things like that. And everybody asked me, they get into town and they said, well, attorney, I need an attorney. What kind of attorney do you get? I said, well, not family law. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Well, what happens a lot of the time is, uh, especially with independent musicians, when they have a contract that's put in front of them, they talk to their family and they have their mm -hmm. uncle's real estate lawyer who, you know, will help them out. A lot of the times that's that's just not what you want to do. Um, copyright, copyright laws and branding and merchandising, all of these things are so intricate and it's it's so niche that you really have to find someone who uh, is experienced in uh, entertainment law. So it's, it's really smart to reach out to someone who has is well versed in the area of copyrights and in the music industry, especially. True, yeah. true, yeah. true. There are people that have signed deals and I know one in particular is my buddy who grew up where I did. Tim McGraw signed a management deal with somebody and didn't know what he was signing before he got to Nashville. Oh. And if he, if he had not had a really good entertainment attorney to help him, um, that person would have owned him. Yeah. Well, and you hear, I'm sure everyone hears these horror stories mm -hmm. over and over again, be it management agreements, you know, different band agreements, of course, record labels and publishing deals that um, people just get taken advantage of yet over and over again, they don't seek mm -hmm. out the proper entertainment lawyer to, to look at these things over before they sign it. I think because they're so excited to, you know, find these agreements and, mm -hmm. and take that next big step forward, which is great, but you really just need to make sure it's the right agreement for you. Don't sign anything before you have an attorney. Look it over. You just don't do that because you don't know what that entails. Now, when we talk about attorneys, when they have a name like Whiskey Ghost <laughs> Entertainment Law, there's got to be a reason behind that, but you know that they're a little bit hipper than the typical one. In town, so. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a dad, so I don't know if I can call myself hip anymore. I don't even know if it's cool to call yourself hip, but yeah. So the, the whiskey ghost, the, when I first actually moved down here, I actually was a, a manager as well. Um, oh, so so you've I did a little bit of management uh, as well as, as practicing law. And, and I started out in the management field with whiskey ghost entertainment. And it actually is a buddy guy song. Uh, yeah. Oh wow! So when I was first moving down here, um, starting my own company to to represent artists, I was listening to Buddy Guy, and that song came on, and I thought, you know what, that is a really cool name, and it would be a really catchy name of a business. So I started it out as, as my management, the name for my management company. And I said, you know, I'm going to keep it for my my law firm too, because no one wants to hear law offices of Colin Marr. I mean, that's not interesting. So <laughs> see, but that is so, so smart. And I've noticed that you, the, the clients that are, uh, that are finding you and they're leaving these very, very cool comments. If you go to whiskey ghost entertainment law, com. It's just whiskeyghost.com actually. So yeah. easy. Yeah. Whiskey. See, even that, even <laughs> knowing that shorter is always better in a domain yeah. name. That's amazing. Yeah. So, but you've got a lot of uh, people and, and and where your law office is located. So I'm out of uh, a co-working space in East Nashville, right on Gallatin Bike there. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all of you musician types and songwriter types, and maybe you are a company that wants to enlist a musician's song to be part of what you do. You can't just use their song without their permission. You need to have 
an agreement. And that's, and that's when you need if there's, cause there's no telling who Colin might know that might have the perfect song for what you're doing. That's right. And you know, there's all types of, I call myself the lawyer for the new music industry. There's all types. And mm -hmm. like you were just talking about your, your agent is getting into mm -hmm. branding and merchandising now mm -hmm. as well. And there's all types of new deals going on. There's new types of agreements and, and there's ways to think outside the box to get deals done. And that's what I'm here for on the business side and for the, for the music creators as well. Whiskeyghost.com, Colin P. Marr, and it is like it pronounced like Bill Marr, no relation. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone asks me that once they once they know the pronunciation, they say, no. "Are you related to Bill Marr?" No, I'm not. And okay, now you're from Boston. How did <laughs> yes. you end up in in Nashville? For this very reason. So, so when, yeah, I mean, I was so I I grew up outside of Boston. I went to law school in Boston, and then I practiced at a large law firm in New Hampshire. And it just wasn't what I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to dive into the music industry and, and represent those who needed representation. Um, mm -hmm. So I moved here to get into the music industry. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of the biggest issues that I saw, you know, I did artist management and I took the bar down here. And what I realized was, man, there are so many people who are just intimidated to reach out to an attorney being Boy. small even small businesses they, they'd rather just not do it and you know one of my main missions is to make that open line of communication just to mm -hmm. e even reach out to be able to say hey do i need an entertainment mm -hmm. lawyer in this situation right and, and that's what i'm here for you know you go on my website there's a free introductory call you just schedule it right in my calendar right there oh. and then we just do 15 minutes for free just to see if you need uh, a lawyer or not. And sometimes you don't, sometimes they say it's not worth it just yet. You know, we will give me a call when X, Y, and Z happens. Did y'all hear that first 15 minutes free mm -hmm. just to <laughs> see if you need it? See how many times do you hear that? Never like never. <laughs> okay. Okay. Get in touch. Whiskeyghost.com. Thank you guys so much for being a part of what we do. We're going to be talking about a cure for our friends and that's coming up tomorrow and Miss Vera standing by. And we're going to also talk about hee haw and the girl with the blue fiddle. But before that, let's just see a little bit. Speaking of songwriters, a very cool event with my friend, Chris Wallen. Hey, are you a songwriter that gets frustrated because the song, you know, you can write in your heart never makes it onto the page. You keep listening to online gurus that have never written a number one song in their lives. You would never take your car to a garage that has never successfully fixed a car. Stop doing it with the craft of songwriting. Hi, my name's Chris Wallen. I wrote Don't Blink for Kenny Chesney, Love Me If You Can for Toby Keith, Something To Be Proud Of for Montgomery Gentry, and a bunch more. Let me help you write your best song yet. Go to buildinggreatsongs.com and let's start construction on your next big hit. See you then. We keep going? I thought we had a little break. Well, we get to go right into that famous train song. Are you all ready for a ride on the train? Well, this is when you can make a lot of noise on Hang On for a ride on the Orange Blossom Special. One, two, three, four.
That is Jana J, who is in studio with us today. <laughs> I'm so, so glad. And you brought that blue fiddle. Well, you know, I'm kind of attached to this. It has become <laughs> my, it has become my trademark. And I just was horrified when they gave me the blue fiddle originally, you know, Devin, because I was a purist. And they said, <laughs> no, we want you to play this blue fiddle on Hia. And I thought, what? What is that all about? But it has it has uh, earned its own way. So yeah, I'm attached to this thing. And the girl with the blue fiddle is also well known because Buck Owens had you as part of his show. Now I love this story, <laughs> how you ended up playing with with Hee Haw and everything, and how you ended up being part of the Buck Owens family. Just I mean, right? Tell First, me. first Buckarette. The, the first Buckarette. First Buckarette. Can you believe it? And, and we had such a great time. It was actually Buck who asked me to play the blue fiddle. Of and course he did. I was kind of horrified and I thought, well, I better do what he asks. So, <laughs> so he's paying the bills. So uh, I agreed to do it. And gosh, I got fan mail to address to the girl with the blue fiddle on Hee Haw. And, you know, Hee Haw uh, and, and Buck show took me to a completely different level. Mm -hmm. Because I was uh, playing around winning fiddle contests and playing with orchestras and all that, but and enjoying everything I was doing. And I did a lot of individual performances. I was playing in a bluegrass band. I thought they wanted to book my bluegrass band, but no, they wanted to book me. And, and then Buck hired me, you know, to be one of his band members. And that opened many, many, many doors. And uh, Crazy. it's been since then. What a story. Uh, it's been a wonderful career. And you've taken this whole connection with Hee Haw and you've taken it on the road. People were touched by Hee Haw in a way yes. that is almost unbelievable. And you created a show, Hee Haw, remembering Hee Haw and right. your cornfield friends. Cornfield friends. Yep. You got it. See, you there was so there. prepared. Uh, My you, know, gosh. you were coming on because you've got Buck Trent. You've got Lulu Roman, who just celebrated a birthday. Happy yes. birthday, Lou. And there you are with Governor Huckabee and Misty. Misty. Oh, yes. And gosh, we had such a great time. And we still do. We're, we're on the road with the mm -hmm. Hee uh, Cornfield Friends. I didn't and have this copy of this. Let me see if we can put it up here where everybody yeah, can see it. Yeah, cool. Cool. And literally, you guys take off and you go on the road. And, and what's coming up? Because it's been a crazy year for touring, oh. like none. All of 2020 erased. I mean, canceled. Not a couple of dates canceled. Most just postponed. But they postponed, you know, and most of our dates now are in 2022, if you can believe that. So 2021, we still have some dates in the fall. 
And mm -hmm. uh, so uh, and casino dates, really nice dates will be up in Sault Ste. Marie, mm -hmm. and which is almost to Canada, you know, but that'll mm -hmm. be fun. And um, so we're we're starting back in and 2022 should be a really, really good year. And then people I'm are so hungry for, for live entertainment. They are. Yeah. And Hee Haw, like you said, still people remember Hee Haw. They watch. It's a family affair, you know, to watch Hee Haw every Saturday night in your home. And uh, so many people relate to that family music and family entertainment. So we are really, really tickled, you know, to be able to meet the people that we've played for on TV for all these years. People are leaving comments. Oh, the memories oh. of watching Hee Haw with my daddy when I was little. Oh. And, and of course, Mark, where, where are you tonight? Why did you leave me here all alone? <laughs> you know, we all have our Hee Haw memories. Well, how can they find out more information about you, Jana? Well, there there are two websites. There's uh, my my uh, website, which is janaj.com, spelled kind of uniquely, J A N A J A E uh -huh. dot com, and then the cornfieldfriends.com. And cornfield spelled with a K. Yes. See how it it's so funny because we can have somebody on the show, <laughs> and when people start responding like crazy, like they are right now. Oh, good. They're just like the comments are coming in because everybody has a cornfield memory. Yes. Well, and that's part of the, this show. We do a lot of the memories and the skits that uh, like Misty has done her bedtime stories and Buck Trent tells all those jokes and he's, oh yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, Lulu is so great. And she's such a great singer. That is the thing about yeah. Lulu Roman that people don't realize. Mm -hmm. they, they know that they she's never, funny. They never had her sing on the show. And she is amazing. She is amazing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. nothing. And, and I will tell you, this woman has played this fiddle enough to wear, <laughs> wear the blue <laughs> off the back. It is amazing. <laughs> that how is much. actually the, the fiddle that I played on Hee Haw. That's the one. Oh. And, uh, and, it's kind of the money maker. I, <laughs> I still have my good um, Italian violin made in 1750 mm -hmm. and, uh, and love playing that. But this is the one that people like that shiny blue fiddle and it's electric. So I'm not plugged in. So we yeah. really can't play today, but. But the cool thing about what Janet does, she also is an amazing teacher of all things violin as well. And has the, the last time we talked, we talked about the, the sweetest, sweetest stories of you uh, imparting your wisdom about the violin to young, young people. I love to teach. And we do, I, I don't know if you can see this, our three festivals, grandlakefestivals.com. But we have, we did our summer festivals last year, partnering with the chamber and the Jana J Fiddle Camp and Music Fest. Mm -hmm. We have about a hundred participants and 20 teachers. And so wow. we have all ages, all string instruments, all um, levels all of interest. You know, if you mm -hmm. like Cajun, if you like Condes, if you want to be a show fiddle, be on TV, whatever. Uh, we, we have a teacher that will specify if you read, if you don't read, if you play by ear whatever. So it's really fun. The Jana J Fiddle Camp. Will you guys check it out? I'm going to tell you, there are so many great music events coming up. Be part of it. And uh, we are just here at Main Street today to just kind of keep you posted on all things. We're going to head to Smyrna right now. Thank you, Jana. Love you. Love you too. Carpe Artista invites you to Simply Smyrna. Simply Smyrna 2021 is on and we're celebrating our 10th birthday with the whole town. You can join the whole party June 12th in the historic Depot District for live music, vendors, food trucks, artisans, beer garden is sponsored by SEMA and a whole lot more. If you'd like to be a vendor, go to carpeartista.com slash event slash Simply Smyrna Vendors 2021. We'll put all the information on the Main Street Today page or go to Carpe Artista's Facebook page. Well, now we have our friend Vera Smith, who's been such a wonderful part of an organization called um, A Cure for Our Friends. Uh-oh, I can't hear you. Let me see. There you are. You're unmuted now. No worries. Am I in there? You are. 
Thank you. Thank you for having me this morning. Can you tell me how a cure for our friends got started? Yes, ma'am. We started raising funds for a little girl named Tori Cook back in probably two, uh, 2000, 2001. And it's ironic that Hee Haw was on your show today because we did a big day festival in Lebanon, Tennessee. And we had a lot of the Hee Haw folks out with us at that benefit for Tori that we had the Hagers and Lulu and I forget who all came to join us, but it was a wonderful day. And that's how we got started. She needed a lung and a heart transplant. That's I'm my sorry. fault. I muted oh. because I, I didn't want any noise to come through from outside the studio. But oh. I wanted to ask you, uh, you had some personal connections with a lot of people with cystic fibrosis. And it seems to be, I don't know, I hear about it more. I don't know whether I'm just more aware. Are the numbers in cystic fibrosis going up? Well, it seems that way. Or mm -hmm. again, I'm with you. I don't know. It's because we're we're now act out here active and raising more awareness. And people are saying, hey, there is somebody out there we can connect with is what I'm hoping that we're we're doing it by helping bridge that. And in the meantime, there are so many people that you think um, it's a tough job. I'm just going to say it. It's a tough job because you've lost some friends and we both mutually have lost some friends. Uh, the reason that, that you're here today is we're going to talk about tomorrow. The uh, cure uh, for our friends annual golf tournament is tomorrow, correct? Yes, ma'am. 12 stones golf course in Goodlitzville. We are very, very blessed. Our afternoon tournament is full. We have 32 teams going out to wow. golf with us. Um, the morning we have um, four open slots at this time. So if anybody still wants to come join us, the seven o'clock tea time, we'll be there. Perfect. 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 Well, I am so grateful for your time. And, and do you have some room for volunteers? If someone would just wanted to show up, there's also yes, a silent auction too. Yes, ma'am. Silent auction. We'll have live music after golf. We have a catered dinner. Mr. Court, Tom Courtney out of Mount Juliet caters our after dinner for us. We have um, silent auction, live music. We have Miss Amanda Beard going to be playing at four o'clock. The Skulls will take on after her. Um, we have um, just lots of fun stuff. We have Sam the Balloon Man. We have a photo booth. So it's a fun afternoon for everybody to come join us. We have, uh, we'll be making two special announcements in the morning at 11 o'clock that we're very, very excited about. Um, I love that. I love that. And I just want to encourage people to get involved with this organization, a cure for our friends, because the important thing that you do is not just about research. What you did is reach into what the needs of the families that are touched by this. Sometimes it's something as simple as groceries. Yes, ma'am. An electric bill, a car payment, some just whatever. It is very devastating because most of these kids as a bare minimum are in the hospital for two to three weeks for their tune-ups annually. So we try to pick up that extra help when mom or dad has to not work or whatever the case may be. It's a beautiful organization. It's very practical, hands-on. I always say the hands and the feet of Jesus. We're really getting in there and doing the work. And God bless all the people at Cystic Fibrosis, uh, the organization that is trying to find a cure. Yes, but me. you're helping families. And one family that we're going to uh, play a video from is our sweet McDougal family. Greg McDougal is, and how many children did he have that were diagnosed with cystic fibrosis? He has four children total, three have cystic fibrosis. And I met Greg early on as a songwriter, an amazing songwriter. And that those diagnoses changed his career path. And then he needed a special house because they couldn't have just any old house. And so he raised money and built the house himself because he is a carpenter by trade. Yes, ma'am, he is. They're very, very special to us. And as you're well aware, we lost um, his youngest son, Sean, 
to this horrible disease. So we just mm -hmm. keep fighting on and, and being here. And we know he's up there watching us and yeah, with, with us through all of it as, as Tori. And there have been others that we lose way too soon. So that's why we keep fighting and do what we do. Um, like I say, we have, um, I'm not sure if I, I'm going to go ahead and spill the beans to everybody. We do have a specialty cystic fibrosis license plate that we'll be unveiling tomorrow at the golf <laughs> tournament. So the first time ever in the state of Tennessee, these families do not receive any federal aid of any kind. So this specialty license plate with um, a help of one of our special CF moms, Amanda has did all the legwork and all the political side of stuff because I just didn't have those hours. And then our friends at Nixon Pro helped us design the license plate. We'll be unveiling that tomorrow. And secondly, on May 20th, we're getting the Korean Veterans Memorial Bridge lit in purple oh. for all our CF um, warriors. And we lost a very dear friend, advocate, mm -hmm. supporter um, a couple of weeks ago and happens to be um, Nancy's birthday. So we're doing it to honor her and all our CF warriors. And they are warriors. And Vera, you are heading up the army. You are heading up the army. I'm so grateful for your time today. How can people get more information? Um, we have our website is simply www.cureforourfriends.org. We do have a Facebook page. Um, you can reach out to us any way at all. I just know that everybody that I have, every time I hear about you, it's just, they just, you're just called an angel. That's what they call it. Vera's our angel. Vera's our angel. And you have brought in a whole army of people to help. We're going to close our show yeah. with the McDougal family on video. And this was just an impromptu on the red carpet concert that they did. And it's, it's a, it's a video that makes me cry because our, our Sean that we lost is still singing with it. And that's, that's one harmony part we don't have anymore, but that's right. But he's fighting the fight in another place he for is. the people that he are is. left. God bless you, Vera, for all you do. Thank you, Devin, so much. A cure for our friends .org. You guys check it out. Remember, be safe, be kind. And remember most of all that you are loved. Have a wonderful weekend, Middle Tennessee. This is Main Street Today. Hello, my name is Greg McDougall. And that's my wife, Diane, over there. And this is, uh, these are our children. This is Jeffrey and Sean and Katie and Grace. And tonight our kids, the McDougal kids, won uh, Youth in Music for the Inspirational Country Music Awards. And uh, that's why you see Mom and I beaming so much. But we're in full-time music ministry and we get to go around simply uh, encouraging others like we've been encouraged taking the kindness that we've been shown and trying to pay it forward, hoping to remind the body, remind folks everywhere that God is a God of love and He uh, indeed can take what the enemy meant for evil and make for good. <clears throat> this is where I shut up now and say, yeah. <laughs> Mama raised her roses in the backyard by <coughs> the hands. It blossomed just outside that old screen door. I can see her kneeling with the roses in her hand. She'd plant one every time a child was born. This one's for Tommy, it's the tallest of them all. The pretty pink one's for your sister Sue. That one near the window, well I know it. But it's growing fast, and I named it for you. When she won blue ribbons at the Wilson County Fair, they'd ask her, what's your secret? She'd tell everybody there. It takes a kind word sometimes, tenderness and sunshine, love and care.
moved to San Antonio. Tommy never left our little town. Then last Sunday morning, out behind the Baptist church, we sang in the garden while they gathered round. Kind words sometimes, tenderness and sunshine, love and care and fertile ground to grow in. As she pulled us closer, smiling as she told us, remember that you're one of Mama's roses. Kind words sometimes, tenderness and sunshine, love and care and fertile ground to grow in. As she pulled us close.